Hi, Dr. Gonzalez here, wanting to reach out to parents of my patients before a release of a tethered oral tissue or a tongue tie, a lip tie, or in some rare cases, even cheek ties. Before coming into the office, I would want a parent to know, especially a parent of an infant, the pain can be pretty significant the first week, especially the first one to three days. I want you to be prepared, if at worst case scenario, to syringe breast milk up into a syringe I will provide, which also be used, and I'll show you the exact dosage for the infant, to even drop Tylenol if necessary. I do want parents to expect to use Tylenol around the clock at least day one. The lasers are so effective at decreasing the risk of infection that I do not feel at all uncomfortable having a patient take Tylenol around the clock at least for day one, maybe half dose, half the time for day two and three because the laser is just so good at preventing and killing infectious microorganisms while I laze and release that tie. So um, please do expect that. I love Arnica Montana. It's a great source for pain control. Um, for adults, we take five pellets that come in a little Arnica Montana bottles under the tongue will dissolve. For infants, I'm gonna decrease that, of course, into about an ounce of breast milk. You're gonna dissolve one to three of these little pellets. And over time, you're gonna do a drop with a little dropper, just a drop, every hour to every two hours, the first day to three days. So keep it refrigerated, just like you would any breast milk that keeps in the refrigerator for up to a week. Um, and you can use that, like I said, that first day, along with the Tylenol. Breast milk chips, you can freeze in a little sandwich bag in the freezer, um, with just maybe less than a quarter of a cup of breast milk lay it flat, of course zip lock it close, and you can cut up and kind of actually just break up with your fingers on um, small pieces that are about the size of a dime. Place that on the wound. Also, every few, you know, hour uh, or even every half hour if you needed to, because it is just breast milk and it feels cold on contact, it melts instantly, it's not a choking hazard or aspiration risk. So being prepared that way. I want you to know that mom and baby need to be sequestered at home for at least a week. I really would love it for three weeks. Dad or anyone who can help mama, please prevent visitors. Don't let them travel. They need to be at home skin to skin contact as much as possible. So that means that they're uninterrupted. Mom's blood pressure is the lowest as possible. She's in this really relaxed state as much as possible because baby will feed off that, will get better healing. So taking it easy at home. We've talked about sequestering at home. We've talked about pain control, um, wound management. That is so critical. We need to be focused on at least three weeks of wound management, sometimes four. What we'll know if it's going to be three or four or five, but usually it's three or four, is the wound is going to be under the lip, cheek or tongue, usually a diamond shape or close to a diamond shape. So kind of think of this. As the wound heals, it's going to contract and get smaller, but it should not lose that same shape. It can get smaller. That's normal. We want that area inside the wound. To, we want to know that it's not an infection. It's just that normal white tissue healing. If your baby has jaundice or higher bilirubin levels, that may look like cheese, very orange or yellowish in color, and that's still normal, not an infection. So you do want to be doing this, these lifts, this wound management, for at least three weeks. As the tissue or inside that area turns from white, yellow, or orange to normal skin color outside, and you can just barely see a faint little line of the original shape of the wound, then we know we only have a few days left to continue that wound management, and that's usually at three weeks, but it can be four or even five in some cases. So it's very critical for parents to get a flashlight out, have someone hold it if you need to, every single time you do a stretch or a lift I should say which is stretching the tongue or cheek and things apart from the gum tissue or apart from the floor of the mouth if it's a tongue so that it doesn't heal back into the tie it will heal back into a frenum and a frenum is a normal holder of tissue in the mouth it's a stabilizer but it's not a tie doesn't restrict the movement anymore. So do expect to see very similar architecture, but not with that tenseness, tightness. We should see improved, in so many ways, improved function of those different areas, the tongue or lip.
or cheek and that matter for that matter. So being ready, being knowledgeable in the fact that we have some pain, we need to do the lifts. It's going to be, you know, smartphone reminders every six hours, four times a day. Bing, it goes off. We got to do our, the lift right there, wherever we're at, do that lift and continue on with the rest of the day. Hopefully sequestered at home, very relaxed conditions for optimal healing, especially the first week, mama and baby. Um, I think we've kind of covered it, especially for infants with the singles for children, uh, toddlers um, that have teeth, or younger children, preschool, preschool age, that are not cooperative and are not maybe uh, mentally or physically able to cooperate um, or show aggression. <laughs> use a mouth prop. I do provide them. They are a $10 fee. I will reimburse you if you choose to bring it back in because I can autoclave and re-sterilize it. Um, but we do sell mouth props for patients with posterior teeth that require a tongue tie release because you do need to get your fingers safely under the tongue and push back straight for that five second lift, which is basically a push. But the reason we call it a lift is it's lifting the tongue off the floor of the mouth and we do need that to be done, like I said, at least four times a day, every six hours for three weeks at least, watching the wound and managing it. So having a mouth prop in place keeps your fingers safe. And for those, some, and it's few, but those few children that may bite down because the first week is very sore when you do that, that lift, and you wanna keep your fingers safe. So um, I can show parents, I always do at the office before we actually dis discharge. Um, we do have videos available, of course, just like this one that shows you a little bit more up close um, how to do that. So imagine I'm an infant, uh, you're a younger child, a toddler, or even a teenager. Um, do want to make sure as a teenager that they're doing those as well. I do insist on parents doing them for them or at least supervising closely those lifts per throughout the day. Most teenagers are great. They don't want the frenum to reappear or the uh, tie to reappear. They don't mind the frenum reattaching um, as long as the tie doesn't. So we're all going to end up with a frenum after tongue tie release, lip tie or cheek tie. We just don't want that uh, tie to reemerge afterwards. Just a frenum to develop as normal without restrictions. So in order to do that, if it's your teenager, toddler, infant, you're going to lift the lip up completely over the nose hole so you can't see it. You're actually obliterating that for five seconds. Under the tongue, you're going to use your index fingers to shoot back towards. You're kind of using landmarks as the earlobes as kind of a guide to where you're pushing back and down. That lifts the tongue up off the floor of the mouth and it allows that tongue to heal without that restriction or tie redeveloping. Same with cheeks, lips, bottom lip, upper lip. It just depends where the restriction was um, or if there were more, maybe it's multiple locations. So bear with me really quickly. I'm gonna show it myself because I have nothing to lose and you know, I, I want parents to know how to do it. Using two index fingers for the upper lip, I will show you and remember it's a five second hold, four times a day, every six hours. Last two I just did were basically to just show how you lower, uh, do the lower lip or lower cheek. Very rare, but on some of my older patients that have gingival deficiencies or a recession, gums pulling away, we do want to re reduce or relieve, um, resolve uh, any kind of uh, lower lip tie or lower lip buckle tie. So those are again just showing some cheek ties if, if that was the case that we had to do a um, revision there or a, a release if it's a first time, um, just so you kind of get to see some, some of those. If you have any questions, all of my patients are going to have my post-operative instructions. My phone number, my actual cell number is on there. Thank goodness no one's calling me right now because that's how I'm recording this. But please do call me if you have any questions at any time. Thank you.